Hey everybody and welcome back time for another installment of hope and help for 2021. You know, when I put this out there asking, what are the things you're trying to navigate in the new year? Some people said maybe a little bit more yoga in their life, maybe a little bit more self-care. So what does that look like, sound like, feel like? Who better to help us out? I wanted to bring in two yogis that many people in Northeastern Pennsylvania know. We have Chris Probst in the house with us, along with Michael Lay. Guys, thanks for being with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. So if Thank we you. can, from the beginning, let's talk about both of your backgrounds, if we can. Chris, let's begin with you. When did you begin getting into yoga and energy work? And then, Michael, you can follow Chris. Sure. Um, I actually stumbled upon yoga 2007, and there's a, a theory in yoga that says um, yoga, you don't find yoga. Yoga finds you when you need it the most. And my dad was dying. He was suddenly diagnosed with cancer and had like two months to live. And I stumbled upon a little yoga studio. And um, it wasn't long after that, I really got like really knew what yoga was doing for me. And it helped me so much. And from then on, I got into the energy work uh, Reiki, um, and then it just took off from there, meditation. And so Michael, oh, 2007. we had a delay there. I apologize. I stepped on you. Um, since 2007, you've been in the industry, and we're going to come back to all things self-care in a moment. But Michael, kind of tell me your story. Well, uh, I've been practicing yoga for about 11 years, and my mother was the one who encouraged me to start practicing yoga. Um, we, we worked together and I'm very close with my mom and she saw that I had become, you know, stressed at work at times and uh, she really thought that yoga would be a wonderful benefit for me. So, you know, you don't always listen to mom right away. It took me some time to, to actually practice yoga. For my first class, it was actually a video. Uh, it was uh, Tony Horton's P90X Yoga. I did it and I was doing it once a week for several, several weeks and, um, before I got the courage to go into a, a yoga studio. And um, once I entered the yoga studio, I started practicing again once a week. And then it became something uh, where it was three times a week because I felt something starting to shift. I really couldn't put my hands on it or understand what was going on, but I felt something started to shift inside me. And, um, you know, then I just, by whim, I said, let's learn more about this. I said, let's do a training. And I did training up here in Scranton with uh, Mission Yoga. And it really was life-changing. And, and you know, uh, I've been teaching since 2014. And I don't even call myself a teacher. It's more like a yoga guide because really your life experience is your teacher. And um, it's been a wonderful journey. And I've, I've done many trainings uh, throughout my career in this. Um, most notably with Brian Kest of Santa Monica with his power yoga. And that has been also a big influence on my life. So it's been a wonderful journey and a journey that keeps continuing on. And I want to point out, by the way, yoga is really just one component of this chat that we're going to dive into. I wanted our guests to meet you guys because a lot of folks have gotten to know you at various studios throughout Northeastern Pennsylvania. I know Mission Yoga, Scranton and Clark Summit's one of them. You also teach at other studios. And I'll kind of let people know how they can find you at the end of this chat and maybe even take one of your classes. But I think for both of you, you can answer this and we can start with Chris. When we hear the term self-care and people are really trying to navigate that in 2021, especially after such a crazy and still kind of feels like it's ongoing 2020 with everything in the pandemic, what does self-care look like or feel like or how do people even approach it? Well, for me, Ryan, in my humble opinion, I think um, whatever it is to make you feel better, um, whether it be a hot bath, uh, yoga every day or once a week, sitting for five minutes, it doesn't have to be a formal meditation uh, like Vipassana or Transcendental, but it could just be sitting there with your coffee and your dogs in the morning, maybe light a candle and just sit five minutes just, just in peace, just being. Um, I like to keep it simple, maybe a walk with your dogs or a walk with a good friend usually is lovely. Um, just really simple massage, I love a massage. A nap, <laughs> I love a nap. So just really something really simple like that. Anything that, that makes you, you're warm to heart. And Michael, how would you describe that? When someone says to you, you know, I need more self-care in 2021, what does that look like? Oh, I definitely love what Chris said. I mean, and, and for me, I like to 
I like to keep it as simple as possible. I like to, I like to have a list for myself with maybe three to five things that I can do for myself. Like, and it's just as simple as taking a walk, you know, maybe taking a walk, uh, eating nourishing food is so important. Um, it's all about helping yourself feel better. For me, it's move, meditate, and, and yoga is involved in that. So those simple things really help me to feel better. And then I have more to give to my relationship, more to give to my community. You know, you can't give away what you do not possess. And that self-care and developing that relationship within is, is really one of the things yoga can help you do with. But it takes time to get true to yourself and listen to yourself. And I think the big thing I wanted you to expand upon, Michael, if you could start with this, yoga and meditation. It's not something you do. It's a lifestyle. Dive into that. And then I'll have Chris answer that as well. Yeah, yoga and meditation really are one in the same. And it's not just something like, I'm going to wake up today and do, you know, five minutes of meditation, and then I'm going to be Zen the rest of the day. Meanwhile, you're getting text messages and, G and, and emails and, and all kind of distractions from the outside. So yoga and meditation is something that you have to actually make part of your life. And it really transcends the meditation cushion and the yoga mat when you start taking your yoga off the mat. So all of a sudden you start to develop this muscle, if you will, of awareness, which is really the goal of yoga. And you develop awareness by quieting down. How do you do that? Well, you become still physically first. And then maybe you just take a few deep breaths. And then all of a sudden, you know, the phone calls, everything outside of yourself, just starts to disappear and you start to tune into the sensations of your body. So it, re it requires an intense listening. And in that listening, you start to hear things. You start to hear the intuition of your voice inside. And then you're able to make choices that are so much more optimal for you. So it's really, there's so many things that go along with it, but um, it's really yoga and meditation are really one and the same. And it really, when you start to develop it, it takes, it transcends the mat, it transcends the cushion, and you start to see and make better choices for yourself. A moving meditation, I love that. And Chris, what would you add to that? Well, I love what he said. I mean, spot on, as usual. Um, yoga is an open-eyed meditation. And as for me, I always say in class, it's about intention, uh, make your yoga, you know, your, your prayer, make your, your life, your yoga, they are one, they are all, it's one. And, um, you know, it just, it doesn't have to be this full drawn out. Maybe you can't get to your class for an hour, or you, maybe you can't practice for an hour, but even just sitting five minutes with an intent, you know, I want to be, let me come from a place of peace. Show me how can I, how can I make this easier? You know, um, just asking a simple question like that. It all goes hand in hand with the yoga, with meditation. Um, I believe everything is a meditation. Uh, writing a letter, having a conversation with a friend, anything that can give you relief. Uh, and when I say relief, I mean, it doesn't have to be something, you know, uh, big. It could just be something, just that, that soothing, satisfied feeling in the moment or, or hopefully many moments. I'm going to keep the topic focused on the yoga for a second, because then I have a number of questions to pick your brains on when it comes to meditation. But for people looking to explore yoga, I know you guys have worked with so many beginners. Where do you even start? I think sometimes when you see video and people are doing all sorts of wild poses and they're contorting their bodies, I think yoga sometimes get this, gets this misrepresentation. So, Michael, let's start with you on that topic. How do you navigate yoga or even breaking into the practice as a beginner? Yeah, you know, for me, I, I could just tell you what, what I did, and, I, and it really worked. I would, I would, if I was a beginner and I wanted to dive into yoga, I would go onto YouTube. There's so many valuable videos. Just type in beginner's yoga, and so many opportunities will come up. Just go ahead and watch 10, 20 minutes. Just familiar yourself with watching the, the, the yoga movements, the yoga asana, if you will. And then kind of watch that. And kind of you know browse around, see what teacher resonates with you, and then start a practice three times a week, 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, somewhere in that doable time frame. 
You don't want to overwhelm yourself with a 75 minute or 90 minute class. It's just too much. And it's, on a, it's, it's something that you won't stick with. You know, three times a week, 20 minutes sessions, very doable. With a teacher that makes sense, it has to make sense and it has to feel right. Those are the two most important things that I could, I could address if you're looking to start a practice. And then it will go further from there. That's the free aspect on, you, you know, on YouTube. Then maybe if you want to delve a little further, you can go to a, a Gaia app, G-A-I-A, or a PowerYoga.com, where there's free content there. I mean, there's so many different places, but it really starts with a commitment and just something approachable and doable, 10 to 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be crazy. Chris, what else would you want to add to that for somebody looking to break into it and, and try yoga for the first time before taking the step? And, and then I'm going to get to meditation, but what would you tell a beginner? Sure. Um, well, for me, I didn't think about it. I just showed up, um, had no idea what I was doing. And I just, I, I fell in love with it. And I feel like, um, you know, it doesn't really necessarily have to be a beginner class. If you can just get past that, uh, inner that that fear at first and just show up you'll you, you'll find that you just usually people they're so nervous when they walk in and then then they end up leaving like why was i so afraid it, it you know it's it was so it was wonderful i felt so comfortable i think you just have to just say i want to try this and then just show up um i'm not really a youtube online yoga girl but i know a dear friend of mine abby um recommends yoga by adrian i heard she's really great and mission we have many online classes that are my faves. If I was going to do an online class, it would be what we have at Mission. And I should point out, by the way, they're still on the Facebook page. At Mission Yoga, if you guys want to try them for free, they're still out there. I guess coming back, you know, Chris, you have such an interesting story to tell. I think how you broke into yoga. You know, I know for a number of years you were a dental hygienist. You were like a nine to five person, go, go, go. And I think you are living proof really that shows you know, yoga is not just, oh, I'm going to get a good stretch. It's so much more than that. And what do you think the misconceptions are, I guess, of, of being a yogi? Because I want people to know really, I think the spiritual benefits, I mean, personally, somebody who's taken both of your yoga classes, you walk out of there, it's like church sometimes for some people, you know? So for you, Chris, what was your personal experience that really has proved and you try to share with others that it's a lot more than just getting limber? Um, you're right. For me, yoga is very spiritual. It's an ancient practice, thousands of years, designed to help the yogis meditate in the caves all day long, uh, that their body would feel better as they sat and meditated. For me, um, what it did for me, I didn't realize, I didn't go there with the intent, oh, this is going to help me get through my father dying. I showed up, and what it really showed me when I was laying at the end of class on my mat how the mind, the body, the spirit is all one. And whatever you call spirit, breath, uh, love, uh, peace, whatever, whatever you want to call it, whatever it means to you, those three, you can't have one without the other. They, they're, they're, those three are together. They're one. And, and that's like from the core of me. So um, what I try to teach in class is, you know, what, whatever you believe, whatever you want, whatever's right and perfect for you, that's um, that's all that matters. You find your way. It brings so much awareness. It's brought so much awareness and clarity to my life. I simply could not drag myself when I was laying feet, like you mentioned. I, I couldn't drag myself one more day there. No matter where I worked or who I worked with, they could be the best. Everything. Um, it wasn't. I needed something more. It wasn't fulfilling me. And yoga, it's it's my life. It's, it's who I am. I've become yoga. We're all yoga. We just don't know it yet. I love that. And Michael, you can feel free to expand upon anything Chris mentioned. I think even as well, if you can touch on the fact that, you know, in so many yoga classes, no matter where you take it, some instructors will obviously focus on, you know, certain hip openers and releases and stuff. And that's where I think people don't realize it's more than just a good stretch. Yeah, I think the largest misconception of yoga is that it's a physical practice, but that's how most people in the West enter it. You know, I think even for myself, I wanted to be physically fit, you know, and um, it, it, I got into it for the physical reason, but something started to shift. And the largest misconception is that it is a physical practice, but it's so much more than that. When 80 to 90 percent of the disease on our body comes from the stress we create in our mind, chronic stress, 
you know, we have to look at the mental state. So now all of a sudden we focus on the breath and it becomes so much more than um, uh, folding forward and folding deeper, but it becomes more about awareness. And that's the mental state where your mind dwells is the largest addiction in your life. And so many of us have our minds dwelling on negative things. And this is just a, uh, an amazing opportunity while in a yoga pose to see where your mind dwells. All of a sudden I'm becoming crit critical. All of a sudden, I'm becoming judgmental. I'm comparing myself to the person next to me. These are all habits in our life that are not being, uh, that are not beneficial. They're harmful to us. You know, judgmentalness, criticalness, they're the foundation of stress. We can work on acceptance here. Imagine that. Acceptance, accepting yourself of who you are. You know, yoga doesn't want to change you. Can you imagine that? Yoga doesn't want to change you. It wants you to accept yourself in this moment. How beautiful is that? Because so many of ourselves reject ourselves. We can go out and see a beautiful sunset and say, look how beautiful the sunset is. We can see a beach picture and say, oh my God, that's lovely. But we look ourselves in the mirror and all of a sudden we become critical. Oh, oh, I got this wrinkle here. My butt cheeks are too big. Oh, my hips, my thighs. So we're so negative on ourselves. Yoga just asks you to be loving and more accepting of yourself in this moment. And it's that intimacy, intense intimacy, which then you can cultivate a healthy relationship with ourselves. So then maybe you can give it away to somebody else and you can have that to give. It's really a beautiful thing. And I love the way you said that. And you know, Michael, I know in many of your classes, you really try to keep people so present and so focused in the day and age where we're still not out of the woods yet with the pandemic and people's minds are kind of everywhere and racing. And now you have so much disinformation on social media that sometimes tweaks people's anxiety and how they feel. I, I guess that's really a, another benefit of kind of just sitting still with yourself, whether you're doing yoga or just meditating. So when people, maybe if they're not ready to try a form of yoga, and I know there's many, and we'll get to a few of them in a moment, how do you advise people to start a meditation? Because you hear people, whether it's Oprah Winfrey or the Dalai Lama or other people talking about the benefits of meditation. So how does somebody who's never done it before do it? We'll start with Michael and then Chris can add to it. I just think the simplest meditation, well, there's so many different forms of meditation. You're right, Ryan. But for me, one thing I like to do is just tune into the inner energies of my body. And it's, it, it could be at a stressful moment or a stressful time of your day. You just place one hand on your heart, another on your belly. You close your eyes and you tune into the inner energies of your body. Maybe you take a deep breath first and you kind of just clean it on out with an out breath. But then you just feel the heartbeat and you feel the rise and fall of the abdomen with each breath. One minute, that's all it takes. One minute to just create a little space. Because then all of a sudden, I'm less reactive. Somebody cuts me off in, in traffic, all of a sudden I'm, I have a little bit of clarity. I have a little space between my reactivity, my reacti reactiveness. So it just creates a little bit of space and a little bit of presence. And it keeps you away from yesterday and the past where so many of us dwell. It keeps you away from the anxiety of the future. And it just brings you into this moment. That's a one minute meditation, a 30 second meditation. And if I was gonna start a practice, I would just start tuning into the inner energy of my body. And then of course, you know, if you wanna go tech route, there's also a, a site or a, an application called Insight Timer. It's a beautiful thing. Um, it's a community of like-minded people who are meditating. And it'll even track your progress. It'll remind you, hey, did you meditate today? I have one sitting on my, my uh, cell phone right now. Reminder to make sure you meditate. Just a little reminder, a gentle reminder. There's thousands of teachers, thousands of different practices, but just that observation meditation, inner energies, maybe even your breath, just observing your breath, just a really nice place to start. It's so important. Chris, anything you'd like to add to that? Sure. Um, again, I agree with Michael. He says it perfectly. Um, for me, I just started, started off five minutes. Um, made a little nook in, actually it was in the basement, my cellar. My daughters were little at the time and it was hard to find a space where I could sit and be alone. Um, and I made like a cute little nook for myself. And I would, my, I, my first Reiki master, my first meditation teacher taught me, because I had such a hard time sitting there with myself. She taught me to play some soft music. I would pick out beautiful music play that and I would sit there for as long as I could and just, I would just breathe. And there's many forms of breath work, 
There's many, uh, there's Calm is an app, Headspace is an app for meditation. There's, there's many forms and I've tried most of them. But for me, it was just sitting there, breathing, some music, whether it was five minutes, 10 minutes or a half hour. That's what grounded me. When Michael talks about getting in touch with your body, for me, sitting there, breathing the music, just in that space taught me to, I could feel that I was grounded. I was coming from my center and the body would just soften, the mind would relax. And I will have to say the animals, my cats love to be around that. My dogs love to be around me doing yoga or meditation. There's, they ground us, they can feel that beautiful energy that's inside all of us. It gets covered up from our life. And I think when it comes to just unwinding and, and coming back to just a yoga practice in general, there are different types that people could be aware of, right? So there's the slow flow and, and there's the open level classes. But I think the great thing that you guys have done such a good job of that I've seen just getting to know you over the past several years is that, you know, I think people sometimes are scared to go into yoga class because people think they have to contort their bodies, as I mentioned before. But really, yoga is your own practice, right? And you can make it your own no matter what class you go into. I think sometimes that's confusing to people. They think I have to be doing, as Michael said, sometimes we get distracted and we're looking at the person next to us. And oh my gosh, I have to be pulling my leg over my head. <laughs> so true. I mean, uh, we, we, we do compare, we do compete. And I think you can really tell uh, a mature practice when the person is practicing within themselves. A person that strengthens the muscle of humility by dropping to my, you know, your knees and taking a break. You know, strengthening the practice and the muscle of gentleness. Who doesn't want to be around a gentle person? The only way you can touch something and care for something is to touch it gently. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to care for our bodies. We're not trying to get some because that would mean you're unaccepting of the place you're at. And we've been taught by our football coach, our basketball coach, our whole lives, that no pain, no gain. And that our, we have commercials that tell us that more is better. So when you're constantly bombarded with that message, you bring that crap, if you will, into yoga. And you turn your yoga practice into crap. It happens all the time. I have to fight against it myself, because I think as a yoga teacher, I need to be able to do this course. It doesn't mean that. It means to be just okay with where you're at. That is a strong practice. It doesn't mean standing on your hands. It doesn't mean sticking your head behind your legs. It's probably more of getting your head out of your tailpipe than putting it somewhere it doesn't belong. And it, it, in order to do that, it really takes awareness. Well said. And just a few more questions, I think, for each of you. You know, in the day and age right now where 2020 and the pandemic was such a great awakening for so many people. What does my next chapter of my life look like, my career, my family, etc.? When you look at all of that, I think you guys, like a lot of other, I want to say woke people, really highlight the importance of a gratitude meditation. And gratitude in general, especially moving into the new year, which is really such a great form of self-care to express gratitude. So both of you, please weigh in on this. How do you go about a gratitude meditation or what does that look or feel like? What's the self-talk you give to benefit from that? Um, well, for me, gratitude, um, I love to talk about gratitude. Um, I usually like the word, I love using the word blessings. And it's the small things. It's, you know... Um, you know, we came back after a three-week hiatus at the studio. And when I got to see my students' faces again and be with you and share practice, like Michael said, I don't consider myself a teacher. I'm, we are one. Students and teachers, we're the same. I'm learning just as much as you're learning. Um, it's the simple things like that. Uh, the blessings. When I look at my daughters, I just look at their faces. My, my dog, uh, the, my, cute, my bedroom that I love. Like the, my family's healthy and safe. Those things are like oh, so near and dear to me. And when I see how yoga, through me, seeped into my daughter's lives and how it seeps into my daughter's lives and their friends and their boyfriends and how everyone is just get, getting some awareness and, and choosing a different way, an easier, softer way. Uh, it's just, you know, there's nothing I would want more for them to find their own happiness, for them to be happy and well. And again, it's the simple things. 
the simple things. And when you feel that, when you remember that, when you remember who you are and what you deserve and how precious you are, you attract more of that around you. Like attracts like, the more blessed you are, the more abundance comes to you in, in all of the realms. It doesn't have to be a check or a big bank statement. You know, just that feeling of abundance and prosperity, wellness. It just, you'll, you'll see it just trickling out everywhere around you. And that to me is um, it's just beautiful. Michael, what would you add to that? I guess coming back when you first mentioned meditation for beginners, right? Carving out that one minute for yourself to sit in a quiet room. If you're trying to take yourself through a gratitude meditation, because it's something I think we could all use, especially since, you know, COVID really woke people up to what mattered and the importance of family and friendships and everything you have in life. How do you kind of walk yourself through that maybe meditation that you're starting out and make it one of gratitude? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think uh, gratitude is a muscle. You know, you use it, it gets strong. If it doesn't, it atrophies. So why not strengthen the muscle of gratitude? Uh, we're so busy crying and complaining about everything we see outside of ourselves. And there's, and what are we doing? We're strengthening the muscle of crying, strengthening the muscle of complaining, strengthening the muscle of negativity. And we just try to balance that out with just five minutes, 10 minutes of gratitude. And take a look around you because there's so much to be grateful for. Maybe it's as simple as looking or thinking of your mom and picturing your, her in your mind's eye and sending her some loving energy for helping you to become the person you are. Maybe you think of your father and the efforts that he made to support his family. Maybe you think of your children, their smiles. Maybe you think of your spouse or your significant other. I even like to say maybe you think of your ex because that's your teacher, that experience. That makes you stronger. It brings you to the person you are in this moment. Maybe you think of your dog and your cat who love and support you the most and sometimes you deserve it the least. The beaches, the trees, I mean, it's endless. But we're so busy crying and complaining and putting so much hatred on social media that we're not seeing that. So let's... Let's try to work on gratitude. It's I've heard it's the doorway to all happiness, and I believe it. I love that. So before we wrap this up, you know, I got so many aha moments from you guys, as always, during this chat. So beneficial, starting with what self-care looked like, you know, and, and I think you did such a great job explaining that self-care doesn't always have to mean yoga or meditation right away. It might start with a walk with your dog or maybe just sitting quietly and then getting into that one minute meditation practice and just listening to your thoughts and what you're thinking and being aware of what's going on. And then maybe thinking of trying your first yoga class, whether it's something free online from YouTube or going in person. Any final thoughts either one of you would like to add if people are saying I need to improve my self-care in 2021 that we didn't touch on. Chris, you can start. Hmm. Well, you know, when you said improve, um, I don't know, I kind of like to look at people and hope that they feel that they don't need to improve, that they are enough. I love and, that. Right, that they are enough. I think that is a new way of looking at ourselves, that we are enough and we're worthy to have what we want, what makes us feel good, what keeps us happy. Um, and I like, I, I love so much that the yoga brings so much awareness, the yoga and the meditation, it just sheds, it peels those layers away that no longer serves us the stories we say, the stories that people told us who we are, what we should want, what we should be. The yoga, you cannot, you, you can't go against your green anymore. Once you begin practices like yoga and meditation, you 30 seconds of being a false self is excruciating. Um, so I like that idea of just peeling away layers. It happens organically. You don't even have to try. You just keep showing up it, it, with intent with your practices, whatever it may be for you, hopefully yoga, meditation, um, and just let all those layers strip away until you come back to who you are. And you're, we're all so precious. We forget. Well said. Michael, any final thoughts, I guess, when people say, self-care, I need it? Yeah, we're so disconnected. We're so divided. I mean, let's start with ourselves. Let's start with the yoga practice. I mean, why not? It helps you connect to your physical body. It helps you connect inside. Let's start a meditation practice. You know, find a local studio, find something online, 
you know, maybe melt hot yoga, maybe mission yoga in France. You know, anywhere you can go that um, that is right for you. But it'll take some time to resonate. And um, but it, it takes time. It's not a quick fix. But I I, I strongly recommend the yoga practice. Um, and uh, the yoga practice will, will definitely lead to a meditation practice, a seated meditation practice. I and I think the big thing I want to point out, I mean, we could be going on for hours diving into all of the different styles of yoga practices, uh, slow flow yoga, yin yoga, restorative yoga. So I guess the best piece of advice that I learned from you guys, if you're ever interested in a certain type of class or yoga practice, you could check out YouTube or even Google it so you have an understanding maybe before you sign up for a class. And at the beginning of this, Chris mentioned she also was involved in Reiki. So Chris, can you just give folks a description of what Reiki is if they've never heard of it? Because I know you've taken a lot of trainings in that. Sure, yes, yes. Um, Reiki is, it comes from Tibet. It's a life force energy. It's a word for life force energy. And we all have it. It's, our, it's what we all have inside our, our life force. And the Reiki work combined with yoga and meditation helps to clear the, the blocks, uh, so to say, um, to work through mental emotional blocks, therefore physical blocks in the body, um, so that we feel calm, we, we become calmer, we, have, we create more peace in our life, um, happiness. And it's just hands on. I don't even have to even talk to you. It's, you know, most people are like, you're getting a Reiki when you come to my classes. We are Reiki. You're getting it when you go to Michael's class, even though you may not be a Reiki master. That intent, that that life force that's all around us, um, it just helps move through, moves through the person's energy. If we all have it. It just helps to let that energy flow so that you come back to who you truly are in your heart, who, you, who were all born to be happy, joyous, and free. I love that. You guys have so many good closing lines. I just want to like end the video right there. That was perfect. But anything else you wanted to add, Michael, before I wrap this up? It was so informative. And I think recapping for people who maybe, um, you know, tuned in for this, a lot of great apps on your smartphone if you're just interested in breaking in the meditation that could also give you reminders on when it's time to meditate, how to go about doing it. There's a lot of free apps free videos on YouTube for Yoga for Beginners, as they mentioned, to search for. And if people want to track down either one of you to take one of your classes, if they felt inspired, moved, or as I like to say, I felt like a gone church when I hung out with you, how do they find you? Let's start with Michael. Well, you were just here, Ryan, for Tuesday morning mass, I mean, with Father Mike. And I say that with no disrespect. Um, uh, yeah, you can find me at Mission Yoga. Uh, I teach a couple days a week up here and I'll stay in Scranton. And I also, uh, we, and we have uh, wonderful teachers here, um, but I'm at Mission Yoga in Scranton. I'm also at Mel Tot Yoga in Edwardsville. So I'm in Luzerne in Lackawanna County. So uh, I'm so grateful to all of you if you would uh, give our classes a try. And uh, remember, it's not how much you do. It's, it's just the uh, idea of showing up and, and, and working with what you have for that moment. And Chris. Yes, hi. And I also, um, you can find me at Mission, my one and only. Um, I teach a bunch of classes there. My specialties are the slow flow and the yin. And I see clients, I see Reiki clients out of my home and also out of the wellness center at Mission. All right. So thanks so much. Of course, Chris Pro, Michael A, two yogis. You guys are great. I think the world of you. And I, I, you know, I know a lot of people, you guys have done a lot of public events, community events in the park. And, and I've seen you in action. And I think the biggest thing is people walk out of there not only feeling like, I did yoga, but I think they also did something good for their head. And I hope this video does that for them as well. Me too. Thank, thank you so much, Ryan. I appreciate the uh, opportunity. All right. Thanks again. It's all about self-care 2021. Thanks to Michael and Chris and for you for hopping on and checking this out. Thanks so much.